Hey, I'm back. <clears throat> Scott X1307. Uh, flip the camera back around. Uh, this time, uh, I've got a contest video uh, for a, another great YouTuber, uh, Jay and Guy One, uh, John. Uh, he's doing a uh, one year uh, on YouTube contest. So, uh, congratulations, John. I uh, it's just a couple months ago I did my uh, one year anniversary contest as well um, so those uh, it's very fun to do that um, it's very cool to have been on YouTube for a year uh, so uh, looks like we probably started uh, within just a, a few months of one another so that's very cool uh, congratulations again um, I think uh, being able to do uh, videos on a fairly regular basis for um, a year or more on YouTube is um, you know pretty substantial um, especially for people like us we do it for fun we're not uh, we're not doing it to make money um, it's not a job um, we just do it do it because we like it um, and that's very cool so uh, you guys uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, I'll leave a link below like usual. Um, and he's got some great videos. Uh, really awesome collector. A lot of uh, Silver Age, Bronze Age stuff. And he really knows his books. Um, so go go check that out now. Great guy. Um, so uh, we get into the contest here. He had a list of eight questions. So I'm going to go through these uh, uh, as quick as possible. Um, first question is simple, uh, where are you from? Uh, most of you know I'm, I'm from here in Georgia, still here in Georgia, uh, born and raised, if you can't tell from my accent. <laughs> um, second question is, <clears throat> yes, uh, when you started collecting and how long have you been on YouTube? Uh, I started collecting, uh, when I was about, uh, between 10 and 12, um, Somewhere between like uh, you know 89, 91, somewhere right in there. Um, I had read a few comics here and there before then, but uh, I think it was about 10 when um, a kid up the street, uh, and I've told this story before, but uh, he's about five years older than me. He had a shoebox full of um, Bronze Age books, a couple of Silver Age uh, uh, issues, and uh, it was a stack probably about that much in a shoe box you know it was full uh, and just gave to me they were stuff from his uh, uh, from his uncle or something like that and uh, that is what really got me into more collecting I started picking up uh, more back issues and stuff uh, from flea markets and uh, thrift stores and things like that when I go with my mom uh, and then it was about 91 or so when I started picking up new books uh, found out that there was such a thing as a comic store. Um, learned about bags and boards and all that good stuff. Um, and uh, that's, that's when I really got into it, uh, like about 91. Um, you know, picked up X-Men, Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, stuff like that. What most people start out with. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and like I said, I've been on YouTube a little over a year as well. Uh, I think my year was up in August, August or September, so working on year two now. Um, uh, his third question, uh, name three YouTubers that influenced you to do vids. Um, before I started doing videos on, on YouTube, uh, it, I had just... Uh, I can't even remember why. I just kind of got bored with TV and started watching videos on YouTube. Just decided to type in comic books. And it came up with a plethora of videos. <laughs> uh, anything from these these uh, more higher-end production videos, uh, like variant comics, things like that, all the way to uh, videos uh, in the, the comic book community. Um, the, the, the comic book community proper, as I call it. Um, it was just people doing collection videos and haul videos, um, trades and stuff like that. Um, I remember, um, may not be in the right order, but I know f three of the first people um, 
that I watched were uh, ETA Nick, um, Captain Strange Life, and of course Mercy Not. Uh, and then it was uh, Howler Mouse, um, Hippies Collectibles, and uh, Hero Hunter 81. Um, and it was really, it was really um, the videos by like Howler Mouse and Hero Hunter. Uh, that uh, kind of got me wanting to do videos because um, I had been going to the flea market uh, for a while picking up uh, 20 cent books and things like that <clears throat> and uh, that's that was pretty much like their bread and butter finding uh, you know really killer deals on books and uh, so um, I started doing that um, so yeah that was uh, that, that that was my big influences um, like ETA Nick, Howler Mouse, Hero Hunter, um, you know the the ones that we all watch, the guys that have been here for a few years. Um, so uh, then is uh, question number four: uh, to name three YouTubers that you think need more subs, um, not necessarily new guys, and uh, just anybody you think that is uh, you know below their where they should be on subs and that could be just about anybody in the community um, I think uh, I think most of us needs uh, it should be you know double the subs that most people have uh, but there I got three here uh, two two newer guys uh, that I think um, you know a lot of people starting to catch on to now uh, one is AG surfer um, he does uh, some really cool collection videos, a lot of uh, silver and bronze age stuff, back issues, real laid back. Uh, I believe he's in uh, somewhere around Seattle, I believe. Uh, at least the last video he, he had up was from a con in Seattle. I could be wrong. Um, but uh, go check him out. He's got, uh, like I said, some good collection videos, uh, some good older back issues. Uh, another newer guy, <coughs> I've heard. Uh, Several people give him a shout out lately. Uh, Illy, I L L Y 865. Um, it's fairly newer, got a few videos up. Uh, again, he's got some good collection videos with silver and bronze age keys, uh, stuff like Thor and uh, uh, Nick Fury, Agent Shield, things like that. Uh, and then finally is uh, buddy Tim Morant. Uh, he is almost at 200 subs, but I think with the uh, the, the videos that he does um, and uh, uh, just all around uh, good guy he has uh, the, his stained glass work is amazing um, he's got a contest going on right now uh, he should definitely be well over 200 subs by now so uh, we definitely need to uh, get people on the Tim Morant bandwagon as well um, so that's uh, that's the three three YouTubers there. There, we could go down a list of you know a hundred or more, but uh, he asked for three. So, uh, and this is uh, question number five. Uh, it's, uh, to pick three of the best books that you picked up in 2014. Um, I picked up some pretty good stuff uh, last year, I think. Um, some key issues and things. Uh, three of my favorite books, I don't know if they're necessarily best, but three of the, my favorite books that I picked up last year. Um, one is this, uh, I won the book in uh, contests, uh, uh, Ferengi 102's contest last year, and uh, I got the sketch done at the SE Comic Con, and uh, it was really cool. I uh, first sketch cover I ever got. Um, it's by artist uh, James Lyle. He does work on uh, Xenoscope uh, books. And he did this really cool Batman. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorites being uh, my first sketch cover. Um, then a book that actually I got at Christmas uh, from Fringy 102. Uh, kind of some nice surprise in the mail. And uh, this is one of my favorite books now. Um, it's Cry for Dawn. Issue number five. Um, I am getting very close to having all of Dawn's appearances. Um, this is the title that I really need uh, the most of. 
and this was a great issue to uh, get as a Christmas surprise. And uh, this last issue I picked up uh, uh, a few months ago, um, probably just a couple months before the end of the year. Uh, it's a comic book store I'd never been into. Uh, it's in a town that's about an hour and a half away. Uh, I was going down to a flea market uh, in that area um, that I hadn't been to in a few years. And uh, decided to stop in this comic book shop. They were open on a Sunday. Uh, went in. Uh, it's a pretty neat store. It's a good little mid-sized store. A lot of stuff in there. A lot of overpriced stuff. But um, there was a magazine box on the floor and I saw some things in there that looked interesting. I'm flipping through them and I found the Life with Archie uh, number 23, the magazine with the Franco V a variant cover, <clears throat> which was kind of the inspiration for the Afterlife with Archie series, um, which is one of my favorite ongoing series currently. And this was really cool. I know. Uh, this book can go for a good bit of money at times. I think the last one I saw sell on eBay went for uh, like 45 bucks. Um, I picked it up cover price. That was very cool. And then he asked um, uh, question number uh, number five. No, excuse me. Yeah, question number six. <laughs> um, the three books that you are trying to get in 2015 <clears throat> and um, right now I'm not really not really going after a particular like single issue like that uh, I'm mostly trying to complete uh, a few little runs like Nexus um, uh, the concrete miniseries uh, Madman things like that uh, a bunch of indie stuff uh, but there are there are a couple of issues that I would really love to find. Uh, one I've mentioned over and over. It was kind of like it, it was the one single issue that I was really looking for last year, and I didn't didn't get it. Uh, and that's Jimmy Olsen 134. Uh, what most people consider first appearance of Dark Side. Um, favorite villain would really love to get that book sometime this year, uh, and at some point. Uh, hopefully I'll be done with school this year and uh, hopefully once I'm got that taken care of I'll have more time and a little more money to pursue a book like that um, I would also love to find Nexus number one from the Capital Comics series which was uh, his first series he only went for like four or five issues before they uh, switched to first comics um, it's not a super expensive book uh, it's usually about 20-30 bucks but I really like to find that and uh, <clears throat> number three, it's kind of a tie, and it's kind of like, you know, whichever one I can find first for the best price, and that's um, either Forever People, number one, which a lot of people kind of consider first dark side, um, and Mr. Miracle, number one. I'm just wanting to collect all the, the, the DC Fourth World stuff by Kirby, so um, to get those, those two would be really cool. Um, I'd also like to get the demon number one as well. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, question number seven. He asks, in a fight, who do you think would win between Apocalypse and Thanos without the Infinity Gauntlet? <clears throat> and I think most people are going to immediately say Thanos. Because even without the Infinity Gauntlet, excuse me, He's a pretty powerful badass. Um, without the Infinity Gauntlet, he's fought the Hulk toe to toe. Um, he can still fight cosmic beings uh, like Warlock, Silver Surfer. Apocalypse is pretty damn powerful as well. He has control of his molecules. He's he has uh, been able to master at least some celestial technology and alter his powers as well. He's fought the Hulk. Um, he's dealt with the Celestials and other cosmic type beings, uh, his psychic powers. That's a tough decision because I think Apocalypse is really kind of underrated. Um, he's a lot more powerful than I ever really gave him credit for. Um, but I think... 
I think just because of a statement uh, that uh, I believe it was in. I just picked this uh, trade up recently in Infinity Gauntlet and read it. And I believe it's a statement by Warlock in here. And he, he states that uh, of all the battles that the Avengers and everyone in the Marvel Universe had had with Thanos, and no one had ever really beaten Thanos except Thanos. That he always left some kind of flaw open to be exploited by the heroes. And that's how he was always defeated. They didn't defeat him because they overpowered him or because they came up with a better plan. It was always something within his schemes that allowed them to manipulate a weakness or a flaw on Thanos' part so he was defeated. So that, to me, that says a lot. Um, and, and you really see it. it the, the only reason in this story, the only reason they're able to take him down with the Infinity Gauntlet, of course, uh, is because of his own flaws so I, I think it'd be a tough tough fight it'd be a really long knockdown drag out you know slobber knocker <laughs> but uh, yeah I think I think just because of the, the 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 history of fights that Thanos has been in I think he would come out on top sorry for that long drawn out explanation but I just that's I think Thanos would win. It'd be it it would be a close tough fight. It'd be a it'd be a badass fight to watch. That's for sure. And the real winners in that fight would be uh, the fans that got to see it. <laughs> uh, okay, last question. We'll wrap this up. Uh, he asks uh, if you could have a sketch of any two characters uh, together. Uh, what what would you like? And I thought about this and thought about this. Um, Kind of my first kind of obvious choice, and someone else picked this in their their entry video, uh, was kind of like uh, Batman and Wolverine, but um, we've kind of seen that in the Marvel vs. DC. Um, I want to see something that hasn't been done before, and I would kind of like to see um, the character Nexus. Nexus here. Um, team up with someone like Silver Surfer or even Nova. Um, they're all kind of cosmic type spacefaring characters. You know, Nexus has fusion casting power. Um, Silver Surfer has the power of cosmic. Nova has the Nova power. I think Nexus and Nova, I think they would kind of, uh, you know, blue and black and yellow color schemes. They're kind of similar costumes. Uh, but even with Silver Surfer, I think that would be cool. So either one. Either one of those, uh, Nexus and Silver Surfer, or Nexus and Nova, I think uh, I think that could make a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool sketch. So, yeah. All right, that's it. So uh, thanks, John, for the contest. Congratulations again on making it uh, uh, over a year on YouTube. Um, here's to another year and more. Uh, keep up with the, uh, keep putting out the great videos, man. <clears throat> and. Uh, <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, we'll both be around here next year doing our two-year contests uh, within a couple months of one another. So, thanks again, y'all. Uh, thanks for watching. Go check out uh, Jay and Guy One's channel. There'll be a link below. Uh, below. Yeah, look down. Click that little thing that says description. Yeah, you see how it, and then it expands. That's it right there. Yep, that's it. All right. Take care, everybody. Till next time, keep reading those books. Later.